everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. So today we have an absolute crap ton of huge Wheel of Time news to get to, some of which uh, dropped the day I wrote my script. So you got to love it when you have an entire script written and then they decide to release more information uh, and you got to rewrite it. Hey, whatever. But I digress. Uh, we have a lot to get to today. So let me thank the channel sponsor real quickly, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest supplier of audiobooks. And they've been a sponsor of the channel since almost the very beginning, uh, but we'll talk more about them later. So let's go ahead and hit the spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow, with very minor character discussions and some incredibly basic plot details from the first and second books of the series. I'm not going to be talking anything major, and I think if you're still reading, you should be good. But if you don't want even the littlest thing spoiled, like names or anything like that, maybe wait until you finish The Great Hunt, but you've been warned. So we have an absolute ton to get to, so let's go ahead and jump right on in. First off, we have the news that the Wheel of Time production will resume at the end of July or early August. Uh, production had previously been halted due to the pandemic, but it looks like travel to the Czech Republic is now possible. All of this information comes courtesy of the Prague Reporter. I'll have a link to that article in the description below of the video. But it appears that both the Wheel of Time and Carnival Row, another major fantasy production being produced by Amazon, in the Czech Republic, uh, are both going to be back to filming very shortly. Now, this is compounded by the fact that it appears, based on his Instagram, that Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins is also back in Prague, most likely preparing to resume filming. Now, this is exciting news because it means the final two episodes of The Wheel of Time are going to be completed, and that gets us one step closer to the final release date for the show. Once the series is finished filming, we'll most likely start to get teaser trailers and advertising, uh, which I know I'm super excited to see and to break down. So in addition to learning that the show is going to be back in production, we also have some reveals on some of the companies providing support to the production, first of all in the past and then also in the future with visual effects. So let's first start with the kennel that provided the wolves that they used for the filming so far. This news comes courtesy of WattSeries.com, an excellent website for Wheel of Time related news. I'll have their site linked in the description below as well. But they reported that a kennel called Z Molu S Kennel. Again, I probably butchered that. I have a friend in the Czech Republic who said that's not even Czech, so I have no idea how to pronounce that. Uh, but in any case, that they provided the dogs uh, that are going to be playing the roles of the wolves in the story. The dogs they provided are actually 28% wolf. Uh, they're just basically slightly smaller than real wild wolves. Uh, their names are Yukon, Tinky, Fufinka, Kalupinka, and Budalinek. I probably butchered those names as well. Sorry, wolves. You may recognize the wolves that you saw in the leaked footage that came out months ago of a wolf attacking a white cloak. Uh, I'm not going to show that here, but you can find it if you want to. Uh, according to the article, training the wolves took a really long amount of time, uh, but they were finally trained and they used them earlier this year uh, and filmed right around February. Here's one of my main takeaways from this news. Uh, it's something I've said already, but it means that they're not cutting the wolves from the story. And they have gone the practical effect route, uh, which I love. It means they're not going to kind of CG, CGI in the wolves. They're going to actually put them in there. Uh, news like this is super exciting to me. I just love it. And it's really cool to see the wolves kind of finally taking shape. Another piece of production-related news is the reveal of Filmka being hired as the stunt team for The Wheel of Time. Now, Filmka is a Czech Republic-based stunt company that's been around for more than 60 years. They've worked on various projects you may recognize from Carnival Row, Spider-Man Far From Home, Jojo Rabbit, and the Romanovs. Uh, they've got close to 470 total credits for their work, and they seem to do a really good job based on the things that they've done in the past. Obviously, they wouldn't be hired for all those things if they were terrible. One thing that they do other than human stunt work, though, and this is, I think, the real news here, uh, is they train horses for use on the sets. They are the company that Amazon is using to provide the horses for the show. You can actually see this in the picture posted by Madeline Madden, uh, the actors cast for Egwene, way back uh, when she was petting the horse that they've cast as Bella. That horse's name is Archie, and Archie will be playing Bella in the show. You can see right there the Filmka credit. Now again, credit to WattSeries.com for this information. I'll have a link to that article as well. Might as well just link their whole website. The next piece of production-related news is so exciting to me that I really can't help but smile when I talk about it. Uh, one of the companies that the production team has hired to produce the visual effects for the show has been announced. Or I should say they announced themselves with a post on Instagram. The company is Scanline VFX. If you've never heard of them, 
They're one of the absolute biggest post-production visual effects organizations in the world. Still skeptical? Well, let's talk through their previous work. Uh, we'll start with just their television work. So, Game of Thrones, Stranger Things. Uh, they worked on the non-fiction science show Cosmos, which is freaking awesome. I love that show. Uh, and those are just some TV shows. Now, you may be thinking, Nablus, that's not very many TV shows. Those are good ones, but what makes you so excited because they've done three shows? Well, they probably haven't had much time to work on TV shows considering all of the big budget movie projects they work on. So let me list those out. They've worked with a little old company called Marvel doing visual effects for pretty much the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, including Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Ant-Man. Uh, they don't really stop with Marvel though. They've done the visual effects for the DC Extended Universe, including the Spider-Man and Justice League films, Aquaman, and then they've also done Rogue One, part of the Star Wars franchise, King Kong, Godzilla, Terminator, Jurassic World, Independence Day, 300, Midway, Chronicles of Narnia, there are literally tons of others, all of them blockbusters. On their website, they have some reels that discuss the thought process behind how they do their visual effect work, kind of what they were thinking as they created it, which I'll have a link to at the bottom in the description of the video because those are really interesting to watch. I caught myself watching like all of them. They have a reel that shows off some of their work, which I have also linked in the description as well. Now do me a favor, when this video is over, watch that video and tell me that you are not ridiculously excited for the visual effects for the show. I dare you. So moving on from behind the scenes production specific news, we have some news that concerns the actors and actresses extras and some new casting announcements. Now let's start with an interview conducted by another Wheel of Time YouTuber, Watt Up, with one of the extras that was cast on the show. Now I'm gonna have the entire video linked in the description below. Make sure to give that a watch. I am not going to summarize the entire video here. I'm not even gonna get to all of the questions that he asked, so you need to watch his video for that. I am just gonna give my opinion on a few of the things that were said and highlight the stuff that I think is pertinent to the news. Now, keep in mind, nothing major was dropped here because just like the main cast, the extras are all under very strict NDAs, so they're not leaking information about the production. And so most of the things that this extra talks about are fairly vague, but there is some stuff worth speculating on. So a couple things about the extra, first of all. We don't have a name or even a gender, but it is revealed in the interview that the person is playing the part of a servant to the Aes Sedai. Now, I don't get the feeling that they were talking about a warder, so really probably just a servant. They also said that they might have roughly 10 to 15 minutes of screen time in the story, which is actually a lot in my opinion. That's roughly a fourth of an episode, which is a lot for an extra, leading me to believe that the Aes Sedai are going to be getting a very good amount of screen time. Additionally, the extra mentions actors and actresses that they think do a great job, and they mention mostly Aes Sedai and Warders, Moraine and Land, The Boys, Matt, Rand, and Perrin, and then of course Loghain. The extra also said they filmed the scene with Barney and Yasha, the actors playing Matt and Rand respectively. Now this is interesting because I can't really think of a time where a character that serves the Aes Sedai would meet them, other than maybe in Camelin while Loghain is being paraded through the streets. So this leads me to believe that Rand will be near the Aes Sedai during this time, and maybe not up on a wall in a different shot. Uh, that might change the garden scene. Who knows? It's something that I've said might not be in the first season, so we don't really know here. Uh, it does sound like Camelin will probably be in the story, unless they're adding in some major scenes here. The other thing to take from this, though, is that we are going to get a bigger focus on the Aes Sedai, the capture of Loghain, kind of that whole plot line, we're going to meet those Aes Sedai a little bit clearer. I think we get the impression that Leandrin will be a part of that, as well as Alana, uh, some of the other Aes Sedai that I'm going to cast. I would assume Kareen Nagashi here. So this, this adds in a little bit more speculation as to maybe the direction the plot might be going. Now, another interesting thing the extra mentions is that they were originally chosen to be a tinker, but that role was changed. Now, I find this worth mentioning only because it essentially confirms that they're not really cutting the tinker part of the story. I know there's a lot of speculation as to what they might be cutting out. It doesn't appear that's one of the things. We already know the White Cloaks are in there, so that makes it sound like uh, Perrin and Egwene's plotline is going to be largely intact. Additionally, the extra mentioned a couple other minor things that I think are really good to hear. First, they said they are using practical effects as much as they possibly can, which I, for one, have mentioned before. I absolutely love that. It means that there's a realistic feel to many of the shots. Probably the biggest thing that we keep hearing from everyone who does an interview about the show is the absolutely amazing sets and production values. When people talk about the show, they're not saying, oh, we're having a lot of fun with the people, or I just love the people I work with. They're saying that we're going to be floored by the enormity of the sets, the ridiculous detail that the production team is going to. 
This extra basically says the same thing, which is really, really encouraging to me. On the whole, the extra is a lifelong Wheel of Time fan, self-described, that basically got themselves a part as an extra on the show. And they're saying that as fans, we are in for a treat. That's one of us getting to say that. That's extremely encouraging to me. In addition to the interview with the extra, the fairly popular Wheel of Time podcast, Talk Aran Riyadh, landed an interview with Jennifer Gian Garcia, the actress that's been cast in the role of Liana Sharif. Again, you should absolutely go listen to that podcast. Uh, I'm not going to summarize the entire interview or anything. And just like before, I want to point out a few things, though, that I did find notable. I will have a link to the podcast in the description, so make sure to listen to that. But just like the extra, Jennifer wasn't able to go into any detail about the plot or her role too much, other than that she is playing Liana very close to how she's written in the books, which is pretty cool to hear. One thing she did bring up is the pronunciation of her name, and that's going to sound really different than many of us are used to. The show has hired a linguist to work with the, the Jordan notes and stuff like that and try to pronounce things. Uh, and they are pronouncing her name not as Liana, but as Leon A. Which is certainly not the way that I heard it in my head. Leon A. She also told us that although she's American, her character is going to have a very proper British accent. They debated a little bit on what her accent might be, and that's kind of what they settled on. So I thought that was interesting. Now, the things that she mentioned that had me the most excited, again, are the sets, which we just talked about, and then Rafe's commitment to the series. So let's start with her comments on the sets. Her words were that the sets were breathtaking and that they were unlike anything she had ever seen. She said they basically built cities for the production and that the sets and costumes were incredibly detailed to the point that people that had read the books before could instantly recognize who people were supposed to be and the locations by the clothes they were wearing. She got very excited as she talked about this. And it was this is really consistent with not only what we heard from the extra earlier, but also from Daniel Henney in his live stream a month ago. Again, genuinely has me really, really excited. She went on to say that the series has a very special place in Rafe Judkin's life. She hinted that there's a fairly profound story behind that for Rafe, uh, and that the series means so much to him on a personal level, and it's really evident with the way they take care in bringing the Wheel of Time to life. Now, comments like this really reinforce my belief that the series is in the hands of a fan. Rafe is one of us. He's a super fan. He desperately wants to do right by fans and honor Robert Jordan's masterpiece. Many of us have a story about how reading the Wheel of Time helped us through something. It sounds like he has one of those stories as well. He does not want to butcher this, for those of you who are still being cynical. I think we're going to get something that is really going to make us happy as fans. Everything we hear points to that. So this brings us up to our last piece of news, and that's some more casting news. Now, some of this is confirmation of people that we already knew or that we had leaked info on. Some of it's new, so let's break it all down. But before we do that, I want to mention the channel sponsor, Audible.com. Audible has been with us here at the channel since the beginning. They're a great fit because they provide audiobooks on a monthly subscription, and the Wheel of Time audiobooks are awesome. Audiobooks are normally really, really expensive, uh, but you can get them uh, each month. You can get one a month for a really low price. The great news is, is that because you're one of my viewers, you're going to get a free audiobook. All you got to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You're going to get a free audiobook that you can keep, even if you don't choose to keep the service. You can find that link in the description of the video as well. It's down there. But uh, anyways, back to the video. So on Wednesday, Rafe Judkins and the Watt on Prime Twitter account announced the casting for a bunch of different characters. So let's start with some of the confirmation of the casting choices that we sort of knew about, but they weren't technically confirmed. We have Christopher Scarif cast as Abel Cawthon, and Juliet Howland cast as Natty Cawthon, Matt's parents. Christopher's a 47-year-old English actor who's acted in 300 Rise of an Empire, Exodus, Gods and Kings, and Skyfall. Juliet Howland is a British actress that we know from her roles in Astral, The Painted Veil, and Scott and Sid. She's also a composer, which I think is pretty cool. Aside from the projects I've mentioned, Juliet has starred in more than 37 projects on television since 2000, meaning she's pretty much always working. Next, we have Mandy Simmons as Days Conger. Mandy has worked in a number of British television shows for a pretty long period of time and having a pretty popular role on the British television show Doctor Who. We got the announcement of Lolita Chakrabarty as Marin Alvere, and it was confirmed that Michael Tuahin, who we already knew had been cast on the show, has been officially cast as Bran Alvear. Lolita is a British actress who has a ton of television credits and well-regarded screenwriter as well, which is also pretty cool. Michael, I've talked about in a previous video, he's an Australian actor, the same as his on-screen daughter, Madeline Madden. He's best known for his roles on Sea Patrol and Farscape. Lastly, we have David Stern being cast in the role of Sen Bui. 
Now, Stern is another English actor who's been working basically consistently since the 70s and has starred in a number of major films and television roles over the years. I don't know much about him personally, other than that he looked really familiar to me when I saw him, so obviously I've seen him in other things. There is a reel of some of his work that I found that I will have that link down in the description below as well. From what I can see of his work, he's going to do really well as Sun Bui. He's a good actor. So on the whole, what do I think of the casting selections? Well, none of these are major roles, but all of them seem to have plenty of experience and they're quite accomplished actors and actresses. I know one of the main criticisms I've read about so far of these casting choices in particular is Michael Tuohine is a bit too much of a zaddy for Bran Alvere. Now, I'll admit, I just learned what a zaddy was about a week ago, and I must say, he probably is one. But to the point, he isn't really fat, and no one should ever trust a skinny innkeeper. While I would normally tend to agree with that statement, I'm going to trust Rafe and the team on this one. Makeup, bodysuits, or even a different direction that they want to take the character, those are not off the table. And they've made enough good choices so far to lead me to believe they're going to do the right thing by the fans on our end. Aside from all that, it's really not going to be a very big deal if a character who's in one episode of the first season isn't quite as chubby as we thought he was in the books. It plays no narrative purpose whether Bran is fat or built. Um, so if Bran Alvier isn't fat at the end of the day, it's not really going to bother me. So that's the Wheel of Time news so far. But I do have a couple of pieces of personal news I'd like to share. For one, we are nearing the release of TheGreatBlight.com. We're putting the finishing touches on it right now to make it presentable. Uh, but it's basically just going to be a beta version of the website, uh, and we'll get that out here in the next couple weeks. Um, we're going to be adding more and more content, so by no means what we release will be a finished product. We'll be adding new wiki entries as time goes by, new news articles, other things like that. But I wanted to get a very bare-bones version of it out there to everybody to start using and enjoying. So, look forward to that. I'll make a video when it comes out to kind of walk everybody through it and all the cool things. The second piece of personal news is that you may start seeing a major uptick in the number of videos that I make. I am moving away from the business that I've owned before, and I'm not really sure what my next steps are, but one thing that is on the table is becoming a full-time YouTuber. Obviously, there's a bit of a financial part to that decision, um, but figuring that out will, part of that is just going to look like releasing more content. So additionally, I'll be rebranding and updating my Patreon with the new website. It's going to change to thegreatblight.com. Patreon is the most consistent form of revenue for a YouTuber. And if I'm going to take that step, it's going to be because of folks like you supporting me on the channel. If you do want to support the channel and the website financially so that I can make more content and really try to transition to doing this a lot, lot more, please consider checking out my Patreon link in the description below and becoming a patron. Thank you to all of you that already do it. You guys are appreciated beyond anything you know, and it really makes this possible, especially going forward in the future. Make sure to let me know what you think of all the Wheel of Time news also uh, in the comments down below, and make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Wheel of Time content. That's really everything I do here, so definitely like, subscribe. There are still tons of you that watch my videos that are not subscribed. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Don't be one of that like 60-some percent that watch and aren't subscribed. Be that guy or that girl. Uh, but hey, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?